Okay, lastly, the last part of the IK spline, we've set up the scale, um, but literally we don't have any twist. Okay, so we've got this nice motion here and also in the base as well. So we're starting to get the behavior that we want, moving things around. Okay, um, but ultimately we haven't got the lateral twist, so this is what we're, we're going to put in now. Okay, as a word of precaution, it's always really useful to test things as you go through, but always make sure you either undo it and go back to the default or zero things out so that you're always setting things up back at the default level. A big uh, a large reason for errors to start to come into your rigging is if you start testing things and you kind of leave things slightly off default and start rigging those in, um, you'll get different values than you expect. So always make sure you're back to default. Um, advice with rigging, try it out on a test file. Once you've got the process working, then do it on your final rig and then you've got no errors. All right, so what we need to do is expose the twist values of that IK handle. So this really is the only reason we need the IK handle. So in the outliner, click on the spine IK handle and control A will bring up your attributes um, and you will find it under IK solver attributes. Make sure, make sure you're in the spine IK H tab, tab, IK handle tab, IK solver attributes, and you'll see advanced twist controls here. So turn them on. Um, and this is how uh, we're going to set up the advanced twist controls. So a big part of what you need to do is to work out. Um, what is the front and back of your character? Now, because you guys have got geometry um, and your character's got a face, it's obviously um, you, you will automatically know what's the front and back of your character. What I'm going to say, because everything's sort of symmetrical all the way around, um, the character is facing forward looking at positive Z. Okay, so the back of the character is facing negative Z. So we'll take that as this is the front of the character, this is the back of the character. Okay, so it's just not obvious because it's all squares and cubes, but we'll say that negative Z is the back of the character. And this is quite useful um, to know. So to set things up, um, enable twist controls and the world up type you want object rotation up start and end and the reason we want that is that we're going to feed in the twist uh, rotations of these controls so we're going to feed in uh, these objects um, as our main twist to get the information from okay now the up axis this is you have to kind of take a leap of faith and and understand uh, that this is the way Maya functions but the up axis isn't the world up. The up axis is uh, the axis that points a, a, away to the back of the character. Uh, and as we said, uh, positive Z is going forward. So um, the up axis is negative Z. Okay. So if, if the um, character was uh, lying on the, on the ground, face down, then the up, uh, the up axis would be Y, but um, because it's pointing away uh, towards the back of the character. So always take the up axis as the, the axis that's pointing away um, from the character, opposite to the front. Okay. We then need to feed in these objects that we're taking the twist from. So I always, um, the base, uh, base control is called hips, um, so literally we, we type uh, the world up, up object 1 will be the hips or the, or the, the base of it uh, and I've called this control top okay? 
Um, so you might have called it chest or whichever one. So let's call it top. Make sure you get the syntax right, capital letters right, otherwise it won't know that it is the object. Okay. So we're taking in the the twist values of these two objects, and, and the twist will, will work out um, what happens as the rotation between them. So the only thing now is working out what the up vector is for each of these objects. And so literally, um, it's what axis is pointing in the up axis that we've defined. Uh, because our controls are in exactly the same position, as in uh, Z is pointing forward, so the up axis of each control is negative z also. Okay. So zero minus one. So whenever you get three channel box together, it's always x, y, z, or x, y, z. Um, so it's always default at y is up. Um, but this is negative z. So you're you're lining up what you've defined as the up axis for the overall system, you're lining up where what axis of each control is pointing in that direction, if, if that helps the explanation. Okay, um, that's all you need. Um, so now when you look at twisting, you've got the full twist, and this works from both directions as well. Okay, so now you've got this really nice spline um, set up that squashes and stretches, um, that rotates and twists, uh, and works quite nicely and is, is nice and, and flexible. Okay, so that is spline IK setup, uh, and obviously you can zero everything out back to back to default. Useful for things like tentacles, serpents, um, and also absolutely fantastic for um, a spine of a character, where this could potentially be um, the the chest and this would be um, the hips as well. So it's totally independent and nice to animate. You would rely on the animator not to push the spine too much. So this is where it's up to the animator to keep the character what we call on model um, and not break it too much. But it's always useful to, to bring in that scale factor because it just looks a lot nicer.